At the end of the First World War in 1918, Germany was bankrupt. It had surrendered some of its most valuable areas, it was humiliated and hated, and this was all after a war in which seven million Germans were killed or wounded. But Germans were divided about who to blame for the disastrous state of their country. To start with, the most powerful movement wasn't the Nazis, but a revolution that included mutinies across the navy and thousands of factories being taken over by factory workers in an uprising inspired by the Russian Revolution. There were massive armed demonstrations in the capital Berlin and the King, or Kaiser, fled. From this movement came the German Communist Party, the KPD, that wanted power to pass to the country's working class. But against them was another section of German society which blamed the Communists for the defeat in the war. They also blamed a weak government, which they called November Criminals, because it had signed the surrender terms called the Armistice in November 1918. Many of these disgruntled people were also soldiers, and so they were armed, and some of them formed an organisation called the Fry Corps. They fought the Communists and opposed an uprising in 1919 that was led by revolutionaries Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg, who were murdered, and Rosa Luxemburg was thrown into a river. Which best describes the state of Germany in 1918? Supporters of the Nazis? Bankrupt, humiliated and hated? November criminals. Which was not a leader of the communist revolution of 1918? Die Katze? Rosa Luxemburg? Karl Liebknecht. The soldiers' organisations which opposed the Communist Revolution of 1918 were called the KPD, the November Criminals, the Freikorps. During the next 15 years, the battle for control of Germany took place between these two forces. So in 1920, a right-wing politician called Wolfgang Kapp tried to take power with a section of the wow. army with the aim of bringing back the Kaiser. But he was prevented by a general strike. And to make things even more chaotic, nationalist terrorists managed to assassinate 356 politicians. The government at this point was called the Weimar Republic and had actually been set up in 1919 to create a stable Germany. All men and women over the age of 20 would have the vote and an elected parliament called the Reichstag. There was also a Bill of Rights which guaranteed equality in law for every German. The trouble was it was easy to suggest that the situation required something a bit more urgent than a Bill of Rights. In 1923, Germany was bankrupt and couldn't make the reparations payments that they had agreed to at the end of the First World War. Then there was a general strike. The striking workers still needed to be paid, so to get round this problem, the Weimar government printed off paper money to pay them. The strike also meant that there was a shortage of goods, and anybody who's seen how people behave in Britain when there's the slightest shortage of something knows the panic this can create. For example, if there's just a, a rumour of a petrol shortage, there's queues for five miles outside every garage with people going in and saying, fill the pram up and, and this box and me pockets and drink some so that we can fill it up again. But in Germany, there was a shortage of everything. The Weimar Republic tried to deal with this crisis by printing more money, but the result was that prices just went up and up and up until Germany was riddled with what was called hyperinflation. This meant that a loaf of bread, which in January 1923 cost 250 marks, in November cost 201,000 million marks. Prices went up so much every day that unions would agree a wage deal for the morning and then at lunchtime they'd have to negotiate a much higher wage deal for the afternoon. Eventually it took so much money to buy anything. There were stories of people using wheelbarrows to carry the money to the shops. There were stories of people leaving briefcases of money lying around and finding that someone had stolen the case but only after they'd taken the money out and left that on the pavement. In this chaos, the Communist Party grew strong enough to take over the occupied Rhineland and a new party grew that blamed all the problems on the Communists, on the trade unions and on the Jews. 
The founder of this party was Adolf Hitler, and his party was called the Nazis. Which of these best describes the Weimar Republic? A totalitarian dictatorship with a system of false labour camps? An elected government with a Bill of Rights? An autocratic monarchy with a secret police? One result of the hyperinflation of 1923 was that a loaf of bread cost 201,000 million marks. Wolfgang Kapp tried to take power with the section of the army. French troops occupied the Rhineland. Hitler blamed all Germany's problems on the British, French and Americans. The good, the bad and the ugly. The communists, the trade unions and the Jews. Hitler's strategy was to recruit from two key sections of society, small businessmen and the unemployed. Initially, he avoided big businessmen who were protected from the crisis to some degree by their wealth, while the industrial workers looked to their trade unions to defend them. However, small businessmen such as shopkeepers felt helpless and were more likely to accept the Nazi arguments. Hitler also needed to recruit a large number of disillusioned and angry unemployed to turn them into his street army, and these people became known as his stormtroopers. In November 1923, Hitler planned to use these stormtroopers to take over Munich, but two politicians he'd got support from, called Carr and Lossol, backed out at the last minute. Hitler then stormed into a beer hall where Carr and Lossow were speaking and with 600 stormtroopers he pointed his gun at them and ordered them to support him. Hitler then took over the local army headquarters. The next day the Nazis attempted a triumphal march on Munich but the police started firing and regained control of the city. Hitler fled but he was caught, arrested and sent to jail where he spent his time writing a book called Mein Kampf. He reassessed his failed attempt to take over the country and decided that from now on he would have to try and take power by constitutional means. He'd stand for election, build his stormtroopers, organise a youth movement called Hitler Youth and, most importantly, shout a lot. After 1923, the Weimar Republic must have seemed relatively quiet for a while. A politician called Gustav Stresemann organised a government called the Great Coalition of Parties Opposed to Communism and fascism, and a man called Charles Dawes, the United States budget director, arranged a loan to Germany of 800 million gold marks and called in all the old currency and had it burnt. So for a few years everything seemed calm, and the Weimar Republic even became a centre for modern culture. In 1929, there must have been Germans who thought, ah, everything calm at last. We can spend the next few years worrying about nothing but make the garden look nice. But it could be argued it didn't all work out like that. The Nazi party appealed specially to big business, small businessmen, factory workers. The Munich Putsch of 1923 saw Hitler trying to start a revolution in a beer hall, the local army headquarters, jail. Which of these helped the Weimar government by burning all its money? Gustav Stressmann, the Great Coalition, Charles Dawes, Well done! You stabilised the German economy by selling big flashcards to short men in rival nations! <laughs>